Well, Lynn Russell with your CNN Headline News. We had hoped to bring you NASA's launch of the Lunar Prospector at this very moment. However, it has been called off for tonight. John Zarella has a look at what NASA hopes to accomplish here. Every night, somewhere on Earth, moonlight shines through bedroom windows. A quarter million miles away, the moon is by far our closest and most familiar neighbor in space. I was strolling on the moon one day. But it has been more than 25 years since the last astronauts visited there. In total, the Apollo missions returned 842 pounds of moon samples. Since then, there has been a lapse in lunar interest. Many people think that the moon has already been well studied. But in fact, Apollo looked at only a fairly narrow band around the equator of the moon. Uh, more than 80% of the moon was not studied by Apollo. Much about the moon remains a mystery. A mystery scientists believe this spacecraft will solve. Called Lunar Prospector, it is set for launch on a five-day journey to the moon. Once it arrives, Prospector, from a 62-mile orbit, will begin a year-long study, analyzing the lunar gravity, magnetic fields, and surface elements. The thing that makes Prospector really special is basically its simplicity. It uh, has no computer on board, for example. This cuts the cost and keeps it more reliable. One instrument has the capability to locate as little as a single cup of water. Some scientists believe water ice is encased in the moon's polar regions. First of all, it's going to answer the question, is there water ice on the moon? If it's there, future moon bases would be more feasible. The water used for life support and as a source of oxygen and hydrogen to make rocket fuel. There are also new computer simulations indicating the moon formed in about a year from debris blown into space after a rogue planet collided with Earth four and a half billion years ago. Scientists hope the lunar prospector proves or disproves that theory once and for all. John Zarella, CNN, at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It's underway. The Lunar Prospector has just been launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida. John Zarella joins us now with a live report. Hi, John. How are you, Lynn? We're just, just getting set up uh, as we speak. We can still see the rocket uh, heading off. It is just a, a bright light, almost like a meteor streaking across the sky. But just about a minute ago, it lifted off here from Cape Canaveral, Pad 46, on top of a Lockheed Martin Athena rocket. The unmanned probe, Lunar Prospector, appears to be, at least right now, all going smoothly, a flawless launch. As I look up, I can still see the Athena rocket carrying the Lunar Prospector heading off. We will not know of course for at least an hour that everything has gone well that it has actually gone into a transfer orbit and then uh, is uh, on its way to the moon and that will take about four and a half days for the uh, the rocket for lunar prospector to actually get to the moon once it arrives at the moon it will go into a polar orbit and begin a one-year study of the lunar surface and uh, the minerals on the on the moon and looking for uh, what they call water ice and the hope is they believe that on the moon's south pole Pole, there is, is an abundance of lunar ice, and uh, if that is the case, that would make it feasible in the future to have uh, moon bases there because you would have, you wouldn't have to take it with you, bring it from Earth. You'd have water, which could provide uh, life support, oxygen as well, and also can be used to make rocket fuel for trips back and forth to the Earth or perhaps on further uh, out into, uh, into the solar system. So uh, right now, everything appears to be going well. Again, we should know in about an hour that it's has actually successfully made the transfer orbit and is on the way to the moon. Uh, Lynn? And uh, John, just for the bean counters, what will this one-year tour cost? Well, actually, it's a lot cheaper than making a Hollywood movie. It's only <laughs> going to cost $63 million, which is bargain basement, uh, <laughs> uh, if you will, compared to uh, past big ticket uh, billion dollar space missions uh, to the other planets in the solar system. Lynn? What a deal. Thank you, John. John Zarella reporting live from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Compact, low-cost spacecraft is starting a year-long mission that could answer some important questions, including whether people could live on the moon. John Zarella reports. The moon beckoned from above. After a quarter century, an old friend was about to pay a return visit. Two 
one zero and liftoff of the Athena. The launch of the Athena rocket carrying lunar prospector marks the first time NASA has gone back to the moon to conduct lunar science since the end of the Apollo program. Most people think with the moon, hey, we've been there and done that. We brought back a half a ton of rocks. We, don't we know everything there is to know? And we really don't. At a price tag of $63 million, Prospector is, as space vehicles go, bargain basement, but is expected to provide a wealth of information. The primary goal is to search for water ice that some scientists believe is encased in the lunar south pole. That discovery would make future moon bases more feasible. If you want to go and do it inexpensively, you need to live off the land. And with water ice, you can make oxygen to drink, you can make uh, oxygen to breathe, you can make water to drink, and you can make rocket fuel. Scientists say whether there's an abundance of water ice or not, humans will one day colonize the moon. But that probably won't happen for another 100 years. Cost has a lot to do with it. A permanent lunar base could cost hundreds of billions of dollars. And perhaps surprisingly, less is known about the moon than one might think. 80% of the lunar surface has never been fully explored. John Zarella, CNN at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida.